Hey everybody, Darren Cross here. Welcome to the lecture video for chapter 12, Business 149, Business Math. Um, so in the last chapter, we talked about simple interest and the, and the calculation was pretty simple, right? Interest equals principal times rate times time. Um, and that time factor is presumably taking into consideration how long we're gonna have this loan or investment. We really talked about loans in that chapter. But um, it didn't take into consideration um, the concept of compounding. That in the last chapter, we talked about simple interest, and now we're talking about compounding interest. It's a little bit different. You'll see that depending upon which side of the coin you're on, uh, it could be a, a huge benefit for you. So let's dig into the lesson here. Um, so what is compounding or compound interest? Well, compounding is the calculation of interest periodically over the life of a loan. So when we looked at uh, things in the last chapter, we just said, hey, we're going to take into consideration that time one time. Principal times rate times time. is If it's five years, that's five, and this interest is going to be the same over five years. Well, compounding is involving the calculation of interest, not just um, spread out over that five years, but you're actually stopping, and you're compounding, and you're counting your interest. Right, so you're actually calculating interest ever so often, and then you're actually uh, beginning to uh, your your future interest is based upon that interest, right? So that is what compound interest is: interest on the principal as well as the previous interest, right? So let's say that you're compounding uh, once a year. At the end of year one, you count your interest, so you actually calculate your interest, and then the amount of your principal and your interest then goes back into the investment or the loan. And then the new interest for year two is calculated on top of that instead of just spreading it out evenly over five years, right? A future or the future value or the compound amount is the final amount of a loan or investment at the end of the last period. This will become clear to you when you start to uh, answer the questions, right? So it'll be, um, They'll say something like, what is the value of this in five years or in 20 years or something like that? Then we also have present value, the value of a loan or investment today. So um, we know what something is in the, in the future. We want to know what we need today in order to get that. And you'll see how it really plays as we go through this. Now, in order to um, do what we have to do in this chapter, we have to understand these further compounding terms, the compounding periods. Um, this tells us how often we stop and calculate interest. So if it's annually, it's once a year, right? If it's semi-annually, it's twice a year. Quarterly is four times a year. Monthly is 12. And compounding daily is typically 365, or if we're talking about ordinary interest, then it's 360, right? So this is how, um, this is how often we're stopping. Um, but actually what we're doing here is we're calculating, we're not even, it's not even gonna, um, well, you'll see, it'll, it'll be based on, um, just like it was before, it'll be based upon a, a year, depending upon how we're actually looking at it. But the thing that we need to know here is the number of periods, which is going to be in. That's very important, and you'll see here in a second. So um, when someone compounds once, when something compounds once a year, then we have to say, okay, how many years? So this is just saying once a year, this is saying twice, four times, and this is every day. But it all depends upon this N, the total number of periods is going to depend upon how many years we're talking about, right? So this is how many times a year, but then we have to look at how many years we're dealing with, okay? So this is how a future value would, uh, you would calculate this, right? If you're actually um, doing this by hand, you would say, okay, I start with a dollar and I'm making 8% for four periods, right? So um it doesn't tell us anything so we assume it's compounding annually so after the first year we make that eight percent right but here's what happens instead of just saying eight add eight so 16 add eight so 24 add eight so 32 what's actually happening here is we are building we're starting this with 108 instead of just a dollar and so the eight percent for the following period is is based upon a dollar eight so at the end of two periods we have a dollar almost 17. so it's a little bit more right and then this period is based upon eight percent of this which is not just a dollar it's a dollar 16. so 
you see that we've ma we're making almost two more pennies um, for this investment of one dollar at the at the end of the third period just by compounding, right? And here, this is this is effectively nine percent over five years, or over four years. Okay. So this is what's really happening. Same thing here, right? So we add this eight cents, and then we're starting year two with one oh eight, and eight percent of that is another nine cents. So it's a penny more. Uh, so we're starting year three with this, and we're starting year four with this. You can see that we end up uh, making more money on an investment. Okay. Now here's the thing. Let's look at this. What we're going to be doing is not really calculating this by hand. You may have a couple of problems that ask you to do this, but the problem is what happens when you're trying to do an investment that's 20 years compounding quarterly. Now you got to do that for 80 periods. That's just not feasible. So we use a shortcut by looking this up on the table. So in this, um, in this chapter, you have a couple of charts, but the main charts that we're looking at are the future value charts and the present value charts. Now the Future value of daily interest is a different thing, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But the key for this is to figure out two things before you figure out anything else, and that is the N and the R. The N is the number of periods, and the R is the rate per period, right? So if you compounded $100 for four years at 8%, what are the N? We're going to ask what the N and R for each of these. Well, there's a formula. The number of periods is the number of years multiplied by the number of times interest is compounded in each of those years, right? So this is saying four years, and we already know this is once, twice, four times. So it's once per year, but four years is um, this one times four, right? This is twice a year. So annually, this would be four years times just once a year. Four years times twice a year. So N would be eight. Four years times four times a year. N is 16. Now that's one component. You also need to know the R. Now what's the, what's the formula for R? Um, the formula is the annual interest divided by the number of times interest is compounded in one year, right? So what you're really saying is if it's 8% for the year and this is one time a year so that whole 8%, sorry, the whole 8% is just calculated once a year. 8%, right? So 8% divided by one, it's just once a year, is eight. But this is twice a year. So you're calculating interest, but you're calculating it twice a year. So halfway through the year, you stop and you have to do half of the interest because you're not doing all of the interest. So it's eight divided by the number of times it compounds in a year. Semi-annually is twice, so that's two. So your R there is four. For quarterly, this is four times a year. Eight divided by four, your R is two. So you gotta know your N and your R for this. Why? Because then we go, I'm gonna skip over that for now. Then what you do is you go to the chart and you say, okay, N and R. This is N, this is R. What's gonna happen is they intersect at the table factor, they call this the table factor. It'll be the future value factor or the present value factor. This one is the future value factor. I call it the magic number. You multiply this magic number times what you got, and that tells you what things are gonna be in the future, right? So you multiply this times your present, whatever you have, and it tells you what the future amount is going to be. So let's look at a problem. Pam Donahue deposits $8,000 in her savings account that pays 6% interest compounded quarterly. So that's four times a year, okay? What will be the balance of her account at the end of five years? Okay, so we need to figure out N and R before you do anything, N and R. So N is, it says quarterly, so that's four times a year and it's for five years. So N is four, four times a year times five years, that's 20. Now the rate is 6% for one year, 
but we're compounding quarterly, so we have to divide that by four. So the rate for our table is one and a half. N is 20, R is one and a half. When you go, we don't actually see a picture of this here, but when you go to table one, the future value, and that's what they're asking, what will it be at the end of five years? What will it be in the future, right? They're asking, what will it be sometime other than now? So in the future. That factor is 1.3469. So when you multiply this times the amount you have now, you see that you'll have an amount in the future, and that is the future value. This comes in handy when we're trying to figure out how much money um, we're going to have later on. If we know what our investments are bringing and we know how often we're compounding, we can guess what our what our what the future value of our investment is going to be. Lots of people, financial advisors should be doing this so that you can be planning on how much money you're going to have or if you're trying to save money for something, right? Now, you can see that we talked about the fact that the rate is a little bit more than what's stated. The nominal rate is the stated rate, the named rate, right? Is the rate that they tell you. But we have to be concerned about the effective rate. And the effective rate is essentially, when you see, I don't, they're bringing this in, truth and savings law. Um, the reason why they bring this in is because anything that you pay into a loan, so all the fees and stuff, get calculated so that you can figure out effectively how much you're paying uh, for the loan that you borrowed, right? So um, if it if it is, um, if you're compounding more often than just, if you're compounding at all, that rate that they state, you're not actually getting that rate. Effective rate is effectively what rate are you getting, right? So the deal is we when we want to figure this out, and that's interesting for us, we'd have to take interest for a year divided by the principal, right? So let's look at this. Um, this is compounded quarterly. Um, and did they tell us something here? So this is just um, compounded quarterly, 8% for one year. So if you look at this, What's happening is um, if I have this investment, so if I invest 8,000 and it compounds quarterly, at the end of you know four times a year, we're gonna stop and calculate interest, but it's 8%, so our R is two. When we go to the, um, when we go to the table, we see it's four times a year times one year, so N is four, R is two. We go to the table and we'll see that our factor is 1.0824. Now, when we multiply that times the 8,000, we get 8659.20. So that's what the future value of this 8,000 is after one year of 8% compounded quarterly. Now, before we look at the effective rate, let's look at this when we do it just semi-annually. So this is only compounding twice a year, but it's for one year. So N is two. The rate is... 8% for the whole year, but we're doing it twice. So it's four and four, right? So it's just four. So N is two, R is four, because we want to figure out what the interest rate is for just one little period within that year. So when we go N and four, our table look up, it's going to be 1.0816. And when we multiply that times 8,000, the amount of our future value when we compound twice in a year, the future value of that investment, it's going to be 86.52.80. This is less than this. So effectively, the rate that we got on our money is different for each of these. But how do we figure that out? Well, we figure out how much money we made or the interest divided by how much money we started with. And when you do that for both, you see that here we have 0. 0. 0.0816 or 8.16%. And here we have 0. 0.0824 or 8.24 percent both of them are actually more than the eight the stated eight percent right so as we compound the more often we compound within a year the better the interest if you can have an investment that compounds daily you want that okay so this is just demonstrating that the effect 
effective rate is actually higher than the stated rate or the nominal rate. Now, um, and this just shows you the effective rate of uh, 6% annually versus uh, semi-annual, quarterly, and daily. This is how much money you would have at the end of one year. If this is, if you just compound once, this is just like simple interest. So you, it's six percent. But if you compound twice in a year, it's approaching six point one percent. This is over six point one. This is approaching six point two. Now this may make this may not make that big of a difference when we're talking about a thousand dollars, but when we're talking about a hundred million dollars, it makes a difference. And so that's why these numbers matter to businesses. Now when we compound interest daily. Um, same thing, you just need to know what the interest rate is. This, see this, as I was saying before, uh, sometimes it's based on 360, sometimes it's based on 365. Our chart is based on 360, but you're going out to the years. So N is the number of years and um, the R is the, the rate that they tell you. And so if you're calculating daily interest, just use this chart, number of years, R, the rate that they give you, and then find the factor multiply it times what you have so they're saying if i had if i had 900 dollars and it was compounded daily for 25 years so i start with 900 dollars and it's at six percent you know that's six percent annually but we're breaking that down for the day how much is six percent divided by 360 but if we add that interest on what will it be after 25 years it's just 900 dollars and um I don't know why they're doing. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why they uh, why they have these here, but if you look at this, what they gave you here, this is the table factor, and when you multiply that times that nine hundred. You just put 900 in once and it turned into $4,032.99. Okay. Are there any daily interest things out there? Not really. Okay. So now we want to calculate present value. And it's the same thing. Find the end in the end in the R. I'm not trying to rush through it. I'm, I'm just telling you that it's the same thing. So what I want to do here is look at a problem. You want to do the exact same thing. Find the N, find the R, find the table lookup factor, and multiply it times what you know. This time what you know is the future amount because we're trying to calculate the present value. So let's let's see how that really pans out. Renee Weaver needs $20,000 for college in four years. So we know what that amount is going to be. She can earn 8% compounded quarterly at her bank. How much must Renee deposit at the beginning of the year to have $20,000 in four years. How much should she deposit presently? So we're looking for the present value and we're gonna go to the present value chart, okay? So you need to know that. That's the thing that's gonna hang you up for this chapter. Which chart am I on? Once you know which chart you're on, you need the N and the R. When you find that magic number, multiply that times the thing you know and it'll tell you the thing you don't know, okay? So let's look at this. Uh, she can earn 8% compounded quarterly. So 8% and it compounds four times a year and it's gonna be for four years, right? So four times a year times four years is 16. N is 16. It's eight for the entire year, but we're only, we're gonna calculate interest for each quarterly period. So that's gonna be two, right? Eight divided by four is two. So N is 16, two is R. When you go to the table, the present value table, you can tell it's present value because most of these are going to be less than one. Because when you multiply it times a number, it makes it smaller. Because if you're gonna have something in the future that grew as a result of interest in time, then you started with a smaller number, right? So let's look at this. $20,000 times the table factor 0. 0.7284 is 14,568. What are we really saying? We need to invest 14,568 today at 8% compounded quarterly to have $20,000 in four years. Okay? Sorry, you might see a glitch there. I actually stopped it for a second, but so um, that actually is everything in this chapter. It really is kind of simple just to conclude and summarize. Don't freak out. 
the way you work the problems in this chapter is number one, know which chart you're on. Is it present value or future value? And uh, it could be the daily, it could be the daily interest. They'll tell you if it's daily interest. So it's going to be one of three charts. How do you know? Think about what they're asking you. If they're saying, what do I need in five years? What do I need in the future? Future value chart. If they're asking, how much do I need to deposit? Present value chart. Find the N, find the R, find where they intersect. That's your table factor or magic number. Multiply that times the thing you know, and it will tell you the thing that you don't know. Okay? But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Good luck.